I'd like to call this meeting in order, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the public for joining us for today's meeting. If anyone in the public has a comment, please type it in the chat feature. Let me give her the board clerk. We'll make sure we get the entire board, make sure that the entire board receives every each comment. You can also email the board after the meeting during the budget process with an additional comment. Email addresses are posted on the website under the Board of Education tab. Thank you. We move on item two, the budget workshop. Subject day, budget workshop. All right, good evening, everyone. So I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, I want to thank our community members for being here. Our faculty and staff for joining us, and of course, our board of education for all their hard work um, during this process. So just to give a little update, I'm going to just give a little update, and then Francis is going to start the, the, um, the presentation. So over the past couple of weeks, we've been working really hard to advocate for the district. I wanna publicly thank Congressman Delgado and New York Assemblyman um, Ashby for meeting with us um, last week and to really doing some brainstorming for us. Um, they pledged to support us in any way they can and they're bringing that back to their, you know, to their offices to do what they can. If I hear any updates, I'll be sure to make sure I let the community know if they're able to advocate and do anything for our district. But I appreciate their time. Today, we were hoping that we would be able to share some New York State runs with everybody. Um, unfortunately, there's been no updates at this point. Um, the budget is technically due tomorrow for New York State, um, but we haven't received anything at, at this moment. We also will have some federal preliminary, federal COVID um, updates for everyone, and we'll give you those numbers. But as we'll talk about, there's still a lot of question marks there as well. So today, our district and Board of Education um, will be having to make some very difficult decisions. Uh, we will start with a presentation that reviews all that we discussed at previous meetings and also gives a couple updates and changes. The board will then have some time to in independently reflect on everything that we presented and then collaborate together to make some recommendations. I want to remind everyone at this point, these are all recommendations because we're not having a vote today on any of these decisions. Our vote will happen at April's Board of Education meeting. So the goal by the end of today um, is that we will hopefully have an idea and some recommendations on what tax levy we want to present to our taxpayers um, at our June, at our May 18th vote, and also what reductions we're going to have to make to programming to make sure our, bu our budget is balanced. Like I said, remember that these aren't finalized until the board approves them at April's meeting. So now I would like to introduce our business official, Francis Riley, who's going to take us through the presentation. And at the end, the board will have an opportunity to ask questions. And also, if the public has any questions, that, like, like uh, Mr. Lambert said, you can put them in the chat. Thank you. OK, good evening, everyone. So just to recap of where we're at, we had our tax levy calculation. Again, the reason why we are at the uh, Starting off with the eight million one hundred ten thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars is that was what was actually levied due to the um, error in the tax bills going out. The actual approved amount was eight point four or eight million four hundred ninety-two thousand. So with that, we have a tax base growth factor that we multiply in. There was a, a little bit of growth apparently in our district. Um, no pilots. Prior year capital exemptions was $492,901. So that gives you your adjusted prior year levy of $7,659,607.77. The CPI, the adjustable growth factor, was very low this year. And we expected that due to COVID. Um, so with that, it multiplied in for the adjusted prior year levy, we wind up with $7,753,820.80. And our capital exclusion for 20 
21 was $387,190. Gives us our maximum allowable levy of $8,141,010.80. So that is our tax levy amount. So our revenues, okay, our revenues, as, as Andrew said, have not changed due to the fact that the budget is not completed yet at the state. Um, so we would be working with uh, our levy, which we just went over, um, our non-tax revenue of $287,000. And right now what our state aid run from the executive budget, the governor's budget is $3,142,787. Gives us a total revenue of $11,570,797. Hopefully, we will see an increase, at least in the state aid for foundation aid. So this brings us to our expense budget. We did some tweaking to this. Uh, we got it down a little bit lower. Um, as we spoke at our last meeting, we put, took the bus purchase out, and that was $125,000, and then there was about $40,000 of um, instructional coach services that were uh, were the, that just to Walter B. So it was just for Walter B, um, math coach and ELA coach. Um, so we reduced those services. We didn't cut them completely, but we reduced them. Um, again, though, bus transportation, um, the BOCI service. So this is going to impact next year's the 2021, 20, 22 aid runs, you're going to lose aid on that because those are expense based. So we're looking at approximately a $16,000 reduction in aid on the BOCI side and about a $30,000 reduction in transportation aid with those two being pulled out of the budget. So that's a $46,000 reduction um, that we can pretty much guarantee that we're going to see next year due to the fact that those are expense based aids and they're not in our budget. So, with those adjustments that we made, uh, we reduced the, the budget down to $12,401,614, and our revenue stays the same. So, the difference now is $830,817. So, there's our gap. So... I broke out basically what uh, kind of what the choices that we would have. So our tax cap is on the first line. So um, our revenue that we increase with the tax cap is only $30,000. Gives us that new levy of $8,141,010. And so that the impact on that budget still gives us a gap of over $818,000. The 4.75% is, uh, I rounded it up, it's a touch over what was actually uh, approved by the voters and what uh, you folks warranted on August 25th, uh, that was 8.492, so the 4.75% increase gets us to uh, $8,495,575. That impact on the budget pulls the gap down to $464,252. And then subsequently, I put then 5%, five and a half, six, which is what we had uh, discussed at our previous workshop. I put in 6.5 and 7%. Um, the 7% basically equates to a touch over 2% of what would have been, been the 8.492. So we put that in there so you can see what that looks like. Um, and, it, and that pulls down the, the gap quite a bit. So with that, the federal money. So a lot was made of the, the federal money that got approved. Um, what we know so far is that Senator Schumer's office is stating that um, Lebanon would get uh, $579,000. I've seen the number um, through state aid planning at Questar BOCES to be a shade over 600,000. Um, 
the reason why we're not uh, too sure about Senator Schumer's number is there's, there's several school districts on his listings that aren't even included on it. So it's hard to believe that, that certain school districts would be just completely excluded from getting any aid. So we're not too sure whether that 579,000 is accurate or not, but it's probably in the ballpark. Um, we do know um, concretely that 20% of whatever money we get uh, needs to be allocated to, to learning loss. Um, and then again, we're unsure what the rest of the money, when it's gonna be released and what it can be allocated for. And so what makes it difficult is we had the CARES money approved um, back in August. We did our initial filing application was approved. That was a hundred, a little over a hundred thousand dollars. And um, in the fall, later in the fall, they made us a, all the districts apply again because there was a ruling that um, they wanted private schools to be able to access that money. So we we reapplied and um, talking to other business officials, districts still haven't gotten a hundred thousand dollars. Then and that was that came through in a stimulus package back in the summer. So we're not really sure when this money would get released. Um, and then again, what it can be allocated for. Um, and then again, much like the 420,000 basically of, of fund balance that was used last year to support the budget, it's gonna create that hole on the revenue side the following year if you, if you however much money you would be able to put in that because this is a one-time one -time deal. Um, I'm going to hand it over to, to Andrew just to go over kind of um, what some of the things that we're hearing that the money can be used for um, when we do get it. So like Francis said, there's a lot of questions on the stimulus money. We were hoping we would have more answers. Um, when, when, I, when I met with um, Senator Delgado, you know, he went through a list of different things like the 20%, for example, could be used for, like we talked about, for learning loss. That would be summer school programs. That would be anything in addition to what we're currently doing now to support kids during COVID, which is going to be great. Um, you know, there's a lot of things we need to do to help our students catch back up and to, and to get back to par where they were before COVID. So that will be used well. Now the rest of the money has to be COVID related as well. Um, and some examples that he said, you know, mental health, um, RTI support, um, any um, uh, um, using, for cleaning supplies, masks, hand sanitizer, spacing. Um, it could be for virtual teaching options. So there, you know, it's really hard to know how we can put this into our current budget. Now, there are some areas in this budget that we certainly could use. You know, like if we look at um, a psychologist position, right? Um, that would certainly, you know, be a COVID related for mental health. Um, some of the positions would not qualify for that money. The, the, most, the most difficult part right now, like Francis said, is we still haven't received the CARES money that we applied for back in August. If we, if we um, budget for this now um, into our budget and we don't receive it until next June, you know, we're going to have a real problem paying our bills uh, because we're, we'll be dependent on that for our budget. So we have to be really careful. Now, hopefully, maybe by April, before we have our budget vote, we'll have some more clear answers on when this money's coming, exactly what it can be used for. Um, there will be an application process in this too. You know, the CARES Act was an application. Um, you had to justify exactly how you were using the funds. So they don't just hand you this federal money. You have to really apply for it and get approved for it. Um, so we just have to, we have to keep that in mind. I wish there was a lot more flexibility with it, but from what we're hearing, it will be flexible, but there's going to be a, a process um, to get it approved. Any questions on the federal funds? Yep, good question. So computers due to virtual learning. So that was that com uh, those computers that we purchased, we waited for for several months, but we did receive them um, in, was it January, February? Yeah, January. So yes, we had it, we used it for virtual learning for computers. So the CARES money was COVID related as well.
So this brings us to, to the final slide, which is the potential reductions. So what we did is um, we just have one slide of reductions. We moved the assistant principal slash athletic director onto this. Um, so we have a total of $471,250 on for reductions. Um, so our goal, as Andrew stated, is first, uh, First goal is we, we really want to know what uh, what the levy is going to be because that's going to dictate what gets reduced. Um, so we can have com certainly have conversations about what the levy should be uh, levied at, and then that's going to kind of dictate what on this board um, we need to to cut and trim on the expense side. Um, so. As you see, we got 471,000 on there and there's a variety of different um, on, on the sheet that you have from the previous slides with the tax cap, the 4.75% all the way to 7% and it gives you the impact on the budget and what, um, what we would want to go at. So basically, uh, if we set our levy at 4.75%, which is close to where we were last year, um, pretty much everything on this on this board would would be part of uh, the reductions. So um, in your packets, you have uh, this particular um, in a spreadsheet with the reductions, you have the, the levy increases and then you also have the updated budget, uh, several pages of updated budget. Um, so I would open it up to, to any discussion or questions anyone may have. Just wanted to mention quick about the, the tax um, levy. Now, as you know, if we go above the tax cap, we have to get over 60% majority. How it works is um, if, if we, you know, if, if the board chooses to go over the tax cap um, and it say if it doesn't pass, it doesn't get 60%, we have one more opportunity in June um, to do that. And as a district, we would have to decide, would we want to go to the same amount or would we want to go to a less amount? Um, so you could see on, on, you know, on this chart, some different options we would have. Um, and then if it doesn't pass the second time, which I'm optimistically hoping it's going to pass the first time, but if it doesn't, then we would have to go to the contingency budget. So I just wanted to make sure the board was all aware of that. What, what is the contingency number? How much, how much more do we have to cut out? Your contingency would be the initial um, levy. So your eight eight million uh, one hundred forty one thousand. So basically, where the tax cap is. Yep. That means we have eight hundred k. Yep. So it'd be a reduction of about eight hundred eighteen thousand, eight hundred seventeen dollar worth of. So we have, the, we have the, the 471, which corresponds to 4.75% levy, correct? Roughly. Correct. What, have, we, have we thought about what the additional $300,000 is going to be? In what in concern? <laughs> Three hundred thousand dollars. Where? Well, if, if 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 the if the voters do not approve, what else do we have to cut? So, other than what's on this current list, yeah, yeah. So that would be decisions we would have to once once we know um, what the board decides to do, um, we will be going back and we'll be looking at so we can plan ahead what other reductions would be. Um, the reductions would be, would, they would certainly affect programs. Um, so, you know, we don't have that at this moment, um, but we would plan that well ahead of time so we can be prepared. And you'll be part of that conversation as well when we get to that. We've done a, a back of the napkin calculation to see, to see what they, I mean, people are going to see numbers like six or 7% and, and they may say, oh, my tax is going to go up by six or 7%, which it really isn't. Have we done any back of the napkin calculations yet that we can share with people? Sure. So, so you know, like $150,000 yep. is going to go up. 
that yep. number of dollars. So the tricky part of that is that we have several different municipalities within our region. So there's about seven different. So it depends on what area you live. But in the so in May, we'll be sending out a, a very detailed um, budget newsletter. It's a six page budget newsletter. And our plan is we've already started designing it will be a chart that depending on what what um, the board decides will say if you have a two hundred thousand dollar home in Steventown, a uh, six percent increase would be this. If you have a two hundred thousand dollar home in New Lebanon, a six percent increase would be that. So we'll have a chart in that budget newsletter um, explaining that. And I guess my other question is if if we if we are put in this place, how long does it take us to get out of this hole? <laughs> Well, I mean, is this permanent damage to the district, or, or do, can we formulate a, a you know a, a plan that gets us back to being whole? How many years will that take? Looking at what we have as far as a tax levy, the higher that we go, the quicker that we're obviously we're going to get out of this thing. Um, it's difficult to it, it, you know it's it's difficult to say. You know, I would say two years if the economy stays the, the way that it is and people get back to work. Um, that's going to be that's going to be a big driver on it um, that should drive down costs for ERS and TRS. Um, you know, if the unemployment stays high, we're going to see spikes in that um, at some point. I mean, we've been lucky. Um, again, we had we had a negative 1% reduction in health insurance. Um, and that's basically because nobody was going to the hospital and getting any sort of elective surgeries last year, but that's certainly going to go up. Um, it's, it's difficult to forecast that. I think that, you know, you're, you're probably two years of, of levying taxes. Definitely. So, so John, just going back to that original question, um, you know, when I was looking at numbers, I, I chose a, a residence um, from East Nassau that was worth about $200,000. And it was about a $225, don't quote me, um, increase in taxes for the year if they wanted a 6%. So that's what we're approximately talking. But again, that's in one area. as we get closer in may the, the counties will be able to let us know one of the one of the trickiest things is with the equalization rates and what orps is going to do on that that's the office of real property taxes so if that's if if everybody's equalization rate stays the same it's very easy to be able to give people a concrete number of what their taxes are going to look like if somebody drops a, a, a 4% increase on the levy could mean 8% to them. Um, we've seen that happen in, in some municipalities because so we're in this segmented district. Um, you, we have two the, two municipalities that are at 100%. They've done their reevaluation, so they're at 100%. So those will be able to give them concrete numbers what their, their taxes are going to look like because um, the equalization rates won't change on those. But the other ones... It's, it's always difficult to tell what the state wants to do. The state's looking for more money. You know, um, they might start playing around with equalization rates on communities. Any other questions for the board? And we're going to then, if there's no more questions, we'll give you time to, yep, go ahead. There's no more variables hanging out there. Everything's pretty concrete. Other than you know, on the expense side, everything's concrete. We're just it's just the revenue side, and hopefully we get increases in foundation aid and things like that from the state. Another just to mention another thing out there um, that's waiting for legis New York legislator and Senate is a retirement incentive um, that is hanging out there. Hasn't been approved yet, um, but there is a retirement incentive out there. I don't know if we, as a district, decided to, to carry it, if we would have additional retirees. 
but that could be something that could play into it, but we don't know when that's going to be approved. It's waiting for approval right now. What about um, voluntary separation for people who are non, non, who don't qualify for retirement? Is there any thought of that? Like a voluntary layoff? So do you mean it's somebody just volunteering not well, to they, work? Yeah, they volunteer, but they'd get a severance package. Yeah, there hasn't been any discussion on that. That's not something that typically happens in school districts or municipalities. We were about four and a half percent. I rounded it up to get us at the just a touch over what we would have been at the four point nine two. So we we're about four and a half percent was the mistake. Correct. Yeah, you're looking at $30,000 is all you can levy of new money. No, you're pretty much, that's pretty much at, you're at, at contingency already, so. Just, just to mention when we were meeting with Ashby, um, he asked for, you know, what, what would you, like me to try to do for the district and you know what we gave him some language and again there's no guarantee on this this would take this would be this would be a push but but we're advocating is um is to make the district where we would have been without that tax error because as you know according to the tax cap you have to go by the levy that um, was collected not the levy that was approved so we are asking the legislator to, to make an exemption for the, for the district due to the error that we're not being punished every single year. And that would then bring us um, to where we should have been and what we should have collected. So we gave him that language. I'm gonna call them again tomorrow just to see where they are with it. Um, you know, there's certainly no guarantees, but that is what we ask of them. Um, so you know, I'm always looking for hope, but um, that's out there as well. And that would take a full New York State Senate and and approval. April twenty fourth. So at the April meeting, you don't have to, in order for us to start getting the word out there, we need some um, recommendations today so we can start planning ahead um, because do you wanna talk about what your process is as, your, as the board clerk? Uh, 20th. That's where you guys are going to meet at 630 at night to either pass or not and to appoint their members. So I have certain deadlines that I need to hit before then with newspapers, with the County Board of Elections, um, uh, having the, the budget number for approval ready. So there's a lot of deadlines. <laughs> Did you want me to speak to anything in particular no. with? Okay. All right. So by the 24th, we have to submit what the tax cap would be. So that will bring us to the next um, April meeting, which is on the 14th. And that's when you'll be approving this. 
Um, but today we certainly need, we need, a, we're calling it a recommendation at this point. Um, kind of, you know, I'm not calling it a decision because your decision will be on April 14th. But in order for us to move forward, we start to, we have to, we have to start having an idea of where we're going to go. Now that idea could certainly change, hopefully for the better. If we get some more information from state aid, we can make a decision in April, um, unless you want to have another one of these meetings before then. Um, I'm not sure how much inform more information we're going to be getting um, before the 14th, but again, that's only in two weeks. If you can believe it. So you, you basically have until you approve the warrant which is what we basically learned this year. Um, so you have until that August meeting to approve what the warrant will be. So even though that the, the vote went out and say you went out at, at 6% and then you got, you know, $600,000 and you wanted to use $300,000 of it to offset the taxes, you can make that decision as a board in August when you actually w put the warrant out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, budget to budget. I mean, we're down. Yeah, but say we had our, we got our higher amount. Yeah. You're, you're, you're about one and a half percent if everything stayed status quo, yeah. And that's where we came up with the six percent that we talked about last week. That would be about six percent increase. Well, I, I was thinking the same thing because I, my, my concern, I expressed this at the last meeting, is we're cutting potentially cutting a vice principal and psychologist. And, and, and my concern is that you're, you're just going to spread the workload to other people. And you, you can't, you can't, you're not in a situation where we're going to say, okay, well, the person's not there, the job's not going to be done. Right? It just puts more stress on the rest of the staff to have to lose those important positions. That, that's my biggest concern. I mean, and there's, I know there are other personnel cuts in here, but that, that means, you know, the burden is carried by less people. It would be very difficult to cut both of those positions. And it's, frankly, it's a recipe for burnout and it's a recipe for more attrition. And, and that, that concerns me more. I mean, that I don't, I don't want to see other people walk because, because of this. So you know, I think we've got to target a higher number. Yeah, I, my, I would not recommend cutting both of those positions because you're absolutely right. That would, that would affect... Um, a lot of things. And, and obviously, I mean, in addition to affecting the staff, it's obviously going to affect the students too. Any other questions from the last meeting with the SRO? So I had a great conversation with the sheriff. Um, and um, I'm trying to think what we. So he is committed to the district. 
he is committed to the district. He really wants to do everything possible to keep um, the district, to keep the SRO in, in the district. So he's incredibly supportive and he wants to work with us. And he is, is committing to doing everything he can do to keep the SRO here full time. I mean, I, I, I wish we did. I feel I feel like we're gambling, right? Because if, if the six percent doesn't get approved, we got to go back. Yeah. We just, I think we need to make it clear and all, I mean, I know you're doing this, Andrew, but I think we have to be really clear in our outreach that what's at stake, black and white. Um, I don't think it will be hurt when you just figure for the budget matter that he put in the comments they went down last year. For that same $200,000, it went down this much, and this year, this year, so you're really not, it's not If we so in the six page budget newsletter that will go out in early May, we'll have a lot of space to do charts like that. And I'll be looking for your input to to create that. We've already started meeting with our communication specialists to start brainstorming and collecting data on that. Once we have the numbers that we're going with, which we won't have the exact number until the April 14th meeting, um, you know, we will, we will start getting that out there. Just so the board knows, some community members are having a hard time hearing, so they're just asking that we talk up. Yeah, Tim, I don't think your mic's been working at all. <laughs> so the board's not going to be voting on this today, but um, is 6% the amount that we want to start working with? Thank you. 
And the federal aid, you can use it up until the year 23. So we, we would have it next year and we could utilize it for the following year for some COVID related things. Do these salaries that, that are listed here for, that are being cut, do those include benefits? Okay. Everything, ERS, TRS, health insurance, dental, and FICA med. And the numbers are specific based on um, the employee that um, the position would be. So they're very specific based on the person. I, mean, I, I know, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just thinking out loud here. <laughs> You know, are there other material cuts we can make? We, you know, fingers crossed we could apply aid to, to restore some of those things and, and, and try to keep people employed. So I, I know you've already stripped it back. To yeah. I'm, so I'm before thinking out loud. Yep. Yeah, nope. Nope. Sure. So before this, we not including this, we already went through and we um, trimmed out all of the equipment and supplies already down. So um, if we went any if we, if we went any lower, it would be very hard to function in some of our departments. And I know we sent, um, I know Kelly sent, there was a request for the contractual lines because those are always very confusing. So we sent those to you. Um, so you had all the specifics about what each for the past three years, what was used yeah. out of those contractual I mean, lines. I looked at those, I, I got a feel, you know, I. I, I my gut feeling was that it to try and cut any of that stuff is just nickel and diamond. It, um, do, do we anticipate? Because uh, it's hard. I guess it's tough. Do we anticipate less mileage expenditures because of COVID, or because it looks like there are a lot of trips to conferences and stuff like that? Yeah, the mileage reimbursement will will definitely be down this year. Um, there's there's no um there's been no conferences there's been minimal um yeah so that that should go down considerably yeah, but even that, that's, those are it's a few grand yeah, yeah. It's nickel and dimes yeah. nickels and dimes yeah I mean, our, our uh, you know 90 of our budget is salary So I think the six percent where we got it. Um, I don't know if we want to come back and revisit this again before the next meeting. If something changes on the finance end. So at April's meeting, you will have an opportunity to make any changes before it's approved. So, yep. And sure. Yeah, yeah. We most definitely could have another workshop and, you know, we can, we have to give how much notice for a public meeting, Kelly, do you recall? Really, in, in circumstances like this, it's as much notice as possible for emergency meetings. However, we give um, like, uh, 72 hours before we get. If you want to wait to see if numbers come in before the beginning of April, I can reach out and see 
if changes need to be made or if things need to be looked at again, I can set up another poll and we can set up another special meeting. I would feel more comfortable with us definitely seeing if the state runs come in and us getting together and sure. being able to look at the numbers again before we have to go on the 14th and sit here and you know have most a regular definitely. meeting and hash it all out that way. Yep, most definitely. The next meeting's two weeks from today. I know, I know. And that's and that's and that's what we heard as well. So if we get substantial, what we'll do is if we get some information, I will of course let you all know right away, and then we can if 72 hours to, to so we can then schedule a meeting even if it's you know the monday um the 12th if we needed to meet that next week is april break i'm here though so i can certainly we can certainly schedule something um next week if we needed to when is april, break? april break starts friday this friday and all next week <laughs> But I will certainly be here, so I we could we could definitely meet next week um, if we get information, or even that Monday or Tuesday before the the regular meeting. Um, but I'll keep you posted when we hear updates. Um, but as of this moment, so we're looking at six percent now. Do you want to start looking at the reductions and start having conversations about that? So maybe what we'll do is we'll give everyone a couple minutes. Um, quick, quick question before we start yep. that. Have we gotten any any feedback from anyone in the community about all this? <laughs> you know, the increase and in cuts and there's been there's been quite a bit of uh, feedback from a lot of um, faculty and staff. Well, I, I guess out, outside yeah. people who, they have a vested interest in this, and I appreciate sure. that. But people just. Your random community member. I have I have not received. I've met with a bunch of people, but I have not received specific feedback. I've heard very positive things about the outreach so far and wanting to support the district, but no one has um, contacted Francis or I directly. So now that we're looking at that 6% number, why don't we just give everyone some time to kind of reflect on it and take a look at that list. You will each have calculators um, and just kind of reflect independently, individually, and then we'll come back in a few minutes and have a group discussion. Andrew, I assume the... Uh Field trips would not have happened anyway because of COVID. Oh, that's because I would. No, next, I guess next year. That's next yeah, year. Next year. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're optimistic field trips could happen next year, but we don't know. But they did not happen this year, and that was one way we were able to. Because don't forget, we we didn't collect all the taxes that we were expecting this year. So that was a line that we took out um, to make sure we can still pay everything we need to pay based on not getting what we thought we were getting this school year based on the tax um, error. So if that was the 
if we're looking at the cusp here as part of the gap. go to 6% of levy, we still have a remainder of $362,000. Correct. So we do not have to cut all of those. So we have 102000 Correct. You got it. That's exactly what we're looking to do right now. Hundred and twelve thousand. One, one recommendation I would have is that, like we mentioned before, um, reducing the assistant principal and the psychologist would be a, would be a, a, a great hardship for the, for the um, faculty, staff, and the students. So my, I don't recommend doing both of those. What percentage of, of the the assistant principal job is is the athletic director? It used to be a five thousand dollar salary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I got moved into the position. Okay. It's definitely more than worth more than five thousand dollars worth of work yeah, from from my dealings with Josh in the past. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I just see that if we eliminate that position, it's how many how many people have to absorb that work on top of their full time job. Presumably, there'd be a. I, uh, I can. I can make a decision. You know, you you could make a preliminary list and then have the ones on the top that you would put back. Um, if we had more funding, you know, it really, we, we are going to have to eventually do this. So it just depends on if you want to do it, work on it now. And it has to be in public um, when the board comes together, which I know, which is why we're here right now. Um, so it really is up to you how you want to work it. We can schedule another meeting. Um, it's certainly not an easy decision for any of us. I will. I know I said this to you, Andrew, prior to the meeting, but I'll say it while we're we're on public record here. I'm I'm concerned with cutting mechanics. I'm sorry, you know that's vehicle safety uh, is of utmost importance with the kids driving bus and you know being on the buses. So to me, cutting and I, I yeah. To me, I just I somebody's trying to rush to to fit their work into a 35 hour week. You know that that's a potential safety concern. We looked into that, John. The reason why we 
put this in here is because uh, there's just much more work is being sent out to dealerships. Um, so in one of the other pullbacks is they, they use the mechanic to drive too much. You want your mechanic turning wrenches. You don't want your mechanic to be a bus driver. It becomes an extremely expensive bus driver. Um, so we're, we're pretty confident that a five hour reduction for the week um, is going to impact our, our safety with DOT. So that's very useful information for us as far as to know like that that's something that can stay within the cut because it's it's proper utilization of that position really um which is why i do agree with tim like we have to go by what you guys recommend i mean we, we we're not here every day we're given these numbers and they're they're numbers i mean we do know how it can impact program and how it can impact personnel but without knowing the depth of why you really have selected this chunk we don't know how to advance that so if you remember at the last meeting, we had just about the amount, um, but we the only thing we added really in here was the assistant principal because that came up at the last meeting as wanting it to go to tier one. So that's what we did. Um, so our recommendation, our original recommendation um, were all the items minus the assistant principal, but that our feedback that we wanted that one in tier one. So that's kind of where the option comes in. That makes sense. Yeah, I had a I had a great meeting with him today. Um, you know, we're just so so proud of him. Um, he has he's been an employee here for thirty three years, and he's chosen to retire. Um, so, um, on his own, you know, we did have a conversation with him today. He's excited. He's he's it's it's a positive thing. So we're going to hire a new mechanic. We, um, it hasn't been approved yet. The retirement hasn't been approved yet. So as soon as it, it's board approved, we will be um, advocating for a new one. One recommendations. We still have eighteen thousand four hundred and seventy-eight dollars. Is that part of the task? Then is which of these, you know, if the AD stays because you guys are saying you've looked at this and you need the AD more than somebody else at this point. We have eighteen thousand to, to still reinstate. Is what I'm understanding. Yes. That's how I see it. Yeah. I mean, Andrew, I, re I recall that I, I guess your email about the SRO said that the, the Columbia or the, the sheriff's office would work with us. I mean, are they, are they are they are they saying they're willing to pony up more money if we can still contribute? They're um, they're looking for a contribution, but they're looking to be flexible in that contribution.
So are you thinking we have to put the 18 towards the SRO and see if they can no, get just, the remainder yeah, from the sheriff? Uh, is that how it's going to work, was, basically, was, if we can one, keep that position? One, it was one thought, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't know, so it's hard to... Yeah, and 18,000 doesn't... And it gets a, a few small things back or partial of something else, right? Yeah. Do, do we have... Do you know how many kids participate in modified sports? Roughly. I guess the, maybe the question would be, uh, I, re I realize this, we can't overload the junior varsity and teams, but will, will kids that could have, would have played modified be eligible to try out for junior varsity? No, they still can. Okay. Can they? Yeah. Okay. So, so sports isn't eliminated, but there's a, there's a, it's harder. It's going to be a harder entry. Yeah. So if you are a modified athlete looking to go to JV or varsity, JV is considered a varsity sport by definition. It's labeled differently. They have to pass the uh, athletic placement exam, which is dependent on student age as to what they have to do for requirements. Plus they have to be approved by the school medical director based on a Tanner score, which is based on their, um, Maturation. I figured. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not easy to test out. Okay. John, you also asked about number of kids participating in modified sports. My breakdown is, is by sport, and the highest average participation rate would be modified boys soccer. And in the 2017, 2018 season, there were 24 kids. Um, the most recent uh, season, um, normal season, 2019, 20 was seven. So somewhere between seven and 24 okay. uh, on, our, on our biggest team. And this year due to COVID, there is no modified sports um, for the fall or winter season, but there will be in the spring. Yep, uh, that's why I'm, that's why I'm asking the questions. I mean, the the clubs the clubs too are also great. Yeah. So part of living out here is is you, you you don't you can't go to your neighbor's house and knock on their door and play, <laughs> at least not on my road. Um, yeah. So the clubs have been a, a, a godsend for for both of my kids. So I just wanted to mention more. I know the assistant principal and the school psychologist we've had discussions on. Just want to remind everyone the school psychologist is split between both buildings. So it does support um, students in both buildings. And then, you know, the, the difference with the assistant principal is it's the um, athletic piece that we are going to have to work out. Right. So those are, those are the two different areas, but my recommendation, like I said, wouldn't be to cut both of them. Um, they're both different positions, but to have both of them out would be very difficult. But um, the school psychologist does service kids at our elementary school as well. So that's just something to think about. But again, your recommendation is that, is that that position is tier one of thinking. So as we met as, as a, as a uh, administrative team, that was the overall recommendation for the administrative team. Um, and to put the assistant principal in that tier two phase. But I see benefits of both. It's a very difficult decision. So I'm, I, 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 I understand. Biggest difference is that psychologists obviously focuses on mental health, student mental health. Um, so that's something to think about and it does affect both buildings.
The only thought that I keep coming up with, and, and I know it's not popular, is, is that because the assistant principal and the AD position are one, if there was a way they could be split apart, I think it would somehow make it where at least, you know, the AD is saved and then the psychologist, you know, and the assistant principal portion would be back on the building principles. That's just, I mean, and I know it's all one position, but it's, and maybe that's being too nitpicky. I just, I can't seem to wrap my head around. It just makes it difficult because it just ties our hands. That, that, that number is just large enough where there's not a lot of movement with anything else. If, if we don't have the assistant principal, we would have to do some research um, to see how we can make that AD, AD position work and what the cost would be. Um, and that would be something we could. This is why I did appreciate John's question about, you know, what is the percentage? You know, it's really hard to determine that right now based yeah. on a COVID year. So, yeah. but, and, and for, for both sides, because it's been so quiet. And being that we do have a merge team right now, we have a merge team going forward. Um, one thing that I, we're doing is we're working, myself and the Berlin superintendent will be working on a contract that we have. And that could be certainly something we can work within that contract responsibilities um, between it. Well, I, you know, I did think about that as well. It is years past, they tried shared services with other districts for other positions. And um, since how we're already merged with them as far as for sports, you know, they have an AD. You know, is there, I thought, I guess this is just thoughts that run through my head. So just food for thought. I mean, J Josh, how much of your time did you spend? It, it seemed to me like you were juggling. It's heavy. So it's yeah. not a $5,000 stipend job. <laughs> I mean, the reason we, we rolled it into the position was because you're having trouble getting people to job. And, and Nobody, no takers on it. It was always awkward. People were not taking it. So I just ended up going there. I, I just I agree with Tim. Sports are important, and I, I it's part of a well-rounded education. And I hate I hate to see that go once again spread across multiple people and potentially not be done right. And I, I know because I was on the phone a lot with Josh when we worked with Berlin. I, it's a ton of work. I don't see how we can eliminate that job and, and have a, a successful athletics program. And make sure kids are getting to the right place at the right time. You know, getting to the right, you know, making sure the games are coordinated and all the community. I'm, I'm sure you're on the phone more often than not, Josh and, and Stephanie. And uh, so I just, I, I really find it tough to eliminate that. It, it's a huge job. and. Our current athletic director has done amazing work with COVID um, and the communication with the other district. It's, it's a tough one. It's a very tough one. And it, it, it gets back to the fact that we are a rural school. It, it's a great outlet for kids to be able to do this stuff. And I hate, I hate to see that. I hate to see any of that get damaged. Yeah, I mean, uh, the psychologist of the fellow, uh, psychologist, I mean, it's a great So that means we get through it. And uh, honestly, the psychologist, uh, if you're on the psychologist's website, they recommend that the psychologist covers about 500 students. It's actually on the psychologist's website. So, the, the difference in how we utilize our psychologists, we don't have any social workers or elementary school guidance counselors. Um, so our school psychologists really do all those different roles. 
uh, which is different. A, a lot of districts will have a social worker, um, a counselor. Um, so that's really the main difference here, which is a great way to utilize our psychologists. And I think that's why our psychologists love being here so much because they are seeing students, working with students, not just doing testing. So that, that is the difference. Um, many districts just use their psychologists for testing and CSE meetings. So, um, you know, the, the, the student's mental health has, has increased dramatically here in the district. Um, and what we've been able to do this year with by having three is we've been able to push into every single classroom um, weekly um, to provide some of that mental health curriculum and planning. Um, it has been an amazing addition to the district, but you're right. Um, this year was the first year that we had a third psychologist in our district. With COVID, um, there's a big push for mental health, and I'm confident that we could utilize with that funding um, another mental health provider, which would be a school psychologist with that funding. That's one thing I'm, would you agree with that, Francis, with that funding? Would you, I, I see a huge justification there with that funding. Oh, that, that position would definitely fit in there. If you look at all the positions on the list, um, that is the position that would fit for COVID purposes. So. That's kind of a gamble. It, yeah, that's really the truth. You know, that would be a position if we know we're getting the COVID money by sometime during next year, <laughs> um, you know, we certainly could, you know, keep that psychologist. And that's something, you know, we could discuss. Up until this year, we've had an intern, um, intern psychologist from SUNY Albany, and it really depends upon the person is how, is how, you know, how we're able to utilize them because it's a student. But it's certainly something. There is a cost to that, though. You do have to pay for um, psychologist interns. But I assume it's less than the full salary with benefits. Okay, so, yeah, uh, I still think we should have another meeting. Uh, maybe feel like doing Monday to 12, a possibility. What, what day was that? Uh, Monday. I'm not available. Over a, what, a decade ago, uh, what, they came out in June, some budgets, July. So there's no guarantee. <laughs> Francis, you want to explain what we do if we don't have a, a state budget, how that works? You, you come up with your budget um, without, you know, you're just using the governor's run as your aid ratio and then um, depending on what you would get in the summertime and you can do what's called an amended budget um, take some doing but you would amend your budget if you get a certain amount of money and then you can exceed the expenditure of what um, what was approved but right now you're kind of stuck all the districts are kind of stuck until they figure out what their aid is going to be So districts, the number we gave you are the number that the districts, including us, are using to try to create a budget even without knowing the details. A lot of your districts are just going to wind up doing a budget and, and pushing forward 
um, unappropriated fund balance into it. And then when the money cut does come, whatever they do, that they'll just pull back their unappropriated. So they're using their cash kind of as a stopgap. Not good. <laughs> yeah. About 190000 If we get the CARES money. I'm free both that Monday and Tuesday prior yeah, to the I'm Wednesday free. meeting. I'm free. So uh, um, if if you want, we could always do a meeting virtually if that's easier. That's an option in this day and age. <laughs> Is it? Doesn't matter to me. Completely up to you guys. I'm I'm here. Um, yeah. Oh, it's it's. Sure. Would you like uh, Would you like us to make a prioritization of this list? I'm happy to do that. So I will send you my prioritization, um, and then that will just be something you can use as as a tool. April 12th, Monday. I know Bill said he couldn't attend that one. Do doesn't. <coughs> Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening, I am available. So, being that we have, because we have the board meeting on the 14th, you want to do the 13th virtual, just so that you don't have to come. That's fine. Okay. 13th virtual budget. Workshop number three. <laughs> yep. Well, you made a you know a difficult decision of the six percent. That seems pretty steady. And if we get more money, we will have less of those reductions we'll have to make, which again, we all know, we're all sitting in this room, none of us wanna make any of these reductions. It's, this is a very difficult process for everyone um, in our whole community, because this is not what we, certainly not what I imagined doing my first year as superintendent of the district, but um, I'm confident that we will, you know, get, get out of this and we will make the right decisions for the community and we will just continue to be able to provide everything we, we do for our students, and that's the goal. And have a balanced budget to do so. I'll second. Let me let me just exp let me explain the preschool thing a little bit. So what we found is that it wasn't um, specific because we have two different committees of special education. We have our regular CSE, is which is for school age children, grades K to twelve, and then we have preschool, which is a separate committee. Um, so by looking at the past, they weren't they weren't differentiated by the two. So we just updated that and made sure we had a separate um, categorization for the preschool. So that's what that is. Other 
All in favor? Aye. I'll second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, so the key, make a motion to appoint uh, Andrew Port as clerk pro tem. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried.